Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So here's an interesting video about how to structure complex projects and whether what you see on a tutorial or what you see on some kind of course, if that actually matches up how people build projects in production. This is a very valid, very interesting question. If you're following along any big courses, chances are you've asked this yourself. So this was a comment on my free 10 hour beginner course. Over here, Rayvon asks, hey, thanks a lot for the great in the course. I'm currently at four hours and I have already learned a lot. I do have a question though. Is this the way you usually structure a game project when working on your own, by adding feature after feature and adjusting the code along the way? Which by the way, let me just say that's a very important thing. It's really awesome how this student actually managed to pay attention and notice that. Some people, especially some beginners, do not notice this part, adjusting the code along the way. On my other free course, on my C-Shop course, over here I have a lecture on refactoring, which is definitely one of the most important things you can learn. I put this lecture right in the beginning of the intermediate section, just because for beginners, usually you should just focus on trying to get things to work. But as soon as you want to get to the next level, if so, you definitely need to learn about refactoring. And that is exactly what this student noticed, so adjusting the code along the way. If I can give you just one simple tip, then it's that. Remember how code is not fixed, it's not solid. Code is meant to be manageable. So you are meant to write some code, then if you come up with a different way or a better way of doing things, you are meant to go back, rewrite, refactor that code, make it better, and then continue going on. Always remember that, always remember how code is not fixed. You can write something, then later on come up with a better idea for how to do that same thing, then refactor it, rework it, make it a little bit better, then continue, move on to something else. So back to this, or did you choose this approach mainly because it works well for teaching? Which is another very important point that, like I said, has to do with the topic of this video which is how our course is different from actual production games. Over here, I'm a software developer who is new to Unity and game dev, and I'm currently learning about clean code, test room development, and similar topics. So I was wondering if in a real project, you would normally spend more time defining classes and interfaces up front, writing unit tests before implementation, or would you still recommend focusing on one feature at a time and just building what's needed as you go? This is definitely an excellent question. It is a very important question. And especially for people who come from something like web dev, where they have some very different programming practices, if you go into game dev, you might notice a lot of differences. Here in my answer I said, so great question. So this is indeed basically how I build all my games, meaning step-by-step -step building feature upon feature. One difference is mostly on visuals. So normally on my own project, I leave visuals until pretty late in the process, only after I built a fully working prototype and validated the game idea. Here I implemented the visuals at the very beginning just to keep the video engaging, but in my own projects, it's just boring cubes and capsules until further along in development. And yeah, for example, here are some screenshots for my game Battle Royale Tycoon. This was back in the early alpha. So you can see basically it has no visuals. So the only visuals it has are characters that I already had from previous games, but the whole thing looks very bare bones, which compared to the final version, obviously everything looks completely different. Another example is the prototype that I made for what would eventually become my dots course. Again, nothing but capsules, all very visually basic, really just testing out the actual logic to make sure it works. And then here's the final game, obviously looks quite a bit different. So yeah, for visuals, that is very different. In my own games, I don't worry about visuals until I have an idea that actually works. But on courses, in making videos, I have to make sure that the video is actually interesting and engaging. So for that, usually I implement those visuals, post-processing, that kind of thing beforehand. And then also, same thing for the input system. Normally, I tend to use the input manager just because it's simpler until almost the end of the project. Which again, goes back to what I said, refactoring, extremely important. So in the beginning, I start with the input manager. I get the prototype working with the input manager just because I already know how to use it. It's very simple, I can use it very quickly. But the input manager is not very good for use in the long term. So at some point in the future, at some point during the middle of development, I refactor it to use the input system to then get a much more proper input. So again, that's a very pregnant example of what I just said. Remember how code is actually a living thing. It is not a fixed thing. So you can start off making the prototype, make some code that is relatively dirty or let's say not necessarily the best code. And then later on, always remember you can go back, refactor it, fix it and move on. So back to this, so other than that, yep, this is how I make my games. So just starting building features one by one in the video that I made about a day in the life of a game dev and YouTuber. This was back when I was actively working on Dingy Gardens. And this one here, I basically showcase how I set up my process so it's all very basic. Just write down a massive to-do list of all the features, all the things that I want to implement and really just go one by one. So yep, I do start by building features one by one. And then very importantly, I don't normally do unit tests just because game development is very iterative. And I find that building tests just leads to a lot of wasted effort since the code design is constantly changing. Again, this is what I was talking about, how some people coming from web dev into game development, they might have some practices that work great in game dev, but are not necessarily the best when it comes to game development. And this I would say is one of them. So if you have a fixed design, it makes sense to write unit tests. I mean, unit tests are objectively a really awesome thing. They basically validate and verify that your code is actually doing what you think it is doing. That's a very positive thing, that is awesome. But if your game is constantly iterating, constantly changing, which if you are actively trying to make a great game, 
you do need to do that. You need to constantly prototype, constantly try out different ideas. And if you do that, every time you rework the game, every time you rework your code, you also have to rewrite all the tests. So that is why when it comes to unit tests and game development, I find that personally, they are more effort than they are actually worth. But with that said, let me also tell you another very important thing, which is sure, I don't necessarily do unit tests. However, I do make sure I write good clean code to make sure that my classes could technically be testable. So I don't write the tests, but I do make sure it is as decoupled as possible from any other piece of code so that if I wanted to write tests, I would be able to. So that is also my guiding line. I might not actually write the tests, but I do write the code in such a way that if I want to make tests, I could do it. And continuing, and I don't define class ahead of time with something like a UML diagram. I just think a little bit on paper and then start building a prototype right away. So yep, this is my process, just a little bit of paper. I like the design on paper. For example, here is the rough design that I made for what would eventually become Hyper Knights. So over here, the main concepts would be capture the world node by node, hack and slash combat kind of like Batman. So it's got swords and arrows. You can capture nodes to generate resources, use resources to build minions, minions gain bonuses near the player, then the various control input types. Since one crucial part about this specific game was how I wanted to make it pretty much a game that was playable by gamepad, since all my previous games were all mouse based. Then you have how all the nodes are set up, the hero, the minion, send minions from one node to the other and so on. So just a very rough draft of what exactly is the game I did I want to make. No definition on what class exists or anything like that. Just a rough outline, then start making the actual prototype. And importantly, as I say here, so I am never afraid of refactoring any code afterwards, so I don't feel any pressure of getting it 100% right on the first go. Again, this is what I was saying, refactoring is super important, don't be afraid of refactoring, it is a very natural part of the process, your code is not meant to be perfect the first way around. Always remember, you can go back, you can refactor, you can improve it, so obviously try to write the best code that you can write on your first go around, obviously try to do that, but do know that you won't do it. Even if you think you are writing the perfect code, chances are in the future, some requirements, something will change in the design of your game. You will have to go back, refactor it. But again, don't worry about that because that's a perfectly natural part of the process. Then continuing here, so although one very important thing is how in this course, I didn't make any mistakes on video because I made all those mistakes before I started recording. In normal project, there is a lot more back and forth. I don't come up with a perfect final solution right away. And if this is definitely the one very important key to wake away anytime you watch some kind of tutorial, some kind of course, what you're watching is the final video, the final thing that happened after the teacher teaching whatever are the contents of the course. After that, person has already done all the mistakes during the entire prototyping research stage. When you see my Kitchen Chaos course, and this one is 10 hours long, it absolutely did not take me 10 hours to learn how to build this game, build this game, record the video and all that. Nope. In order to produce this 10 hour course, I believe it took me something like five months. Same thing for literally any tutorial you might find. For example, this really fun one, the awesome inventory Tetris system. I really enjoyed making this one. But again, this tutorial was not made in just 10 minutes. I did not learn how to do this in 10 minutes. So anytime you see a tutorial or a course, always remember that. Always remember how you are looking at the final product after all the mistakes have been made. So if you in your own project are making mistakes as you are building the project, you are not any different. That part is simply cut away from all the course, all the tutorials, but all of that still happens. No matter how much experience you have, you are always going to make some mistakes. Like I say here, in normal project, there's a lot more back and forth. I don't come up with a perfect final solution right away. Then over here, I say what I just said. So, and the one part you don't see is all design work that went in before this video was made. So I first design on a piece of paper what I want the game to be like, just like I do with my own games. And only after I have a solid design on paper do I start building something. Although I don't do super detailed GDs, just a basic one page design document is enough to get an idea for what the game will be and then get started making it. So for example, what I just showed, I like to draw on paper, really just come up with a rough outline of what exactly I want to build. And then importantly, crucially, I go ahead, open a new ENT project, start building a prototype. And then like I said, refactoring is very important. So constant iteration, constantly building upon it. That's basically how I make all my games. So if this was a very fascinating question about how exactly do you structure complex projects, what are the differences between courses and production games. So I hope you found my thoughts interesting and learned a bit for your own game dev journey. And actually right now, since it's summer, because of that, I made a special summer only bundle containing all my courses. So it contains the premium C-sharp course. This one covers everything from beginner to advanced. And each lecture has FAQs, quizzes, and importantly, interactive exercises. These force you to actually put into practice what you're learning, so you make sure you are actually learning. It also includes my ultimate Unity overview course. So this is where I explain over 70 tools and features that the engine has. You probably don't know a bunch of these. Then it includes my Dots course. Dots is really awesome. It's for writing code that runs literally 200 times faster. This is really impressive. Then it also includes the premium version of my two multiplayer courses. So one on making a simple game using either netcode for game objects or netcode for entities. Also includes the premium version of my free Kitchen Chaos course and the multiplayer follow-up, as well as my older, but still pretty nice, the Builder Defender course. Then it's got my visual scripting course if you want to try that out. And I've even included my upcoming Lunar Lander course. This one will be coming out later this month. And just for fun, I also included all nine of my own Steam games. 
So everything here, all of this contains an insane amount of knowledge. If you go through everything in this bundle, I guarantee you won't be able to make pretty much any game you can think of. This summer bundle, this one is only available for a limited time. If you don't have any of my course yet, then this is a great deal. So check it out in the link in the description. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.